On the Radio is brought to you by Zurich Insurance, the perfect place to catch up with all things Melbourne. If you enjoy this content and want more inside access from the team, make sure you visit the club website. Oh, hello. There you go. Melbourne yeah. membership day today. Six game demon membership for 66 bucks. Apparently, Head to- they're up to about uh, 60. Thousand? Well, why wouldn't you be, mate? Why, why wouldn't you be? If you're a supporter of the Melbourne... light on. Even if you're a Pat... Well, there's never been a big member. Let me give this. Oh, Membership.melbournesc.com.au. That's where mm. you go if you want to get the six-game Melbourne membership for 66 bucks. If you're a passive Melbourne supporter who's never had a membership, why wouldn't you jump on now and get a membership and be part of this team? And they are welcoming everyone onto the bandwagon. They've won one. Mm. Uh, Christian Petrarca knows there's at least another one in there and probably another no, two. No, they don't take he that for granted. Say, he, he won't say no, that. No, because he doesn't believe it. He, don't, he would not we, take it for granted, Andy. No, of course he won't take it for granted. That's why he's working his backside off to make it happen with his of teammates. Course. Let's stop talking about all of that and just say good day to Christian Petrarca, with us? who joins us on the show. Oh. Hello, mate. How are we, boys? How are you going? We're going right. Very now, good. Have you, how are you going? I can't detect any early sniffles in there. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm all good, mate. I am all good. Negative as you can be. Well, there's a couple extra we led to believe. Tommy Brown's reported there's already um, three from last week's home, or four if you count Toby Bit. Is there really? Well, apparently. Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Turn it up. Come on. Come Come on. on. I actually have no idea. It's my day off today. <laughs> no, well, the story came out yesterday, but apparently there's two more of your mob who, are, uh, who have tested positive. Honestly, have no idea about that. That is the first I've heard of it. Well, I, well, hopefully the information mm. that has been relayed to us is incorrect and uh, everything. But you're, for Melbourne supporters' sake, you will be lining up this week against the Hawthorne Football Club. That is a given. That is a given, unless anything happens tomorrow. But yeah. I am lining up on Saturday <laughs> and pay a take on the Hawks. Good man. Has it been noticeable around training the last week or so because of all the issues that are, that are popping up and it's almost like it's your turn for it to go through you guys? Although you had quite a bit in the preseason. I'm not sure, but uh, are there certain things that you can't do now because of uh, the uh, the outbreak that you've currently got? Yeah, we're trying to minimise um, a few risks. I mean, first of all, probably meetings. And that's so a lot of our meetings now are on Zoom. Um, and it's something we haven't really... Uh, we something we have experienced before. We obviously had the last three years during a COVID situation, so uh, we're used to it. It's probably probably nice to actually have a half day and actually come home and do the video calls from home. Um, but yeah, just for probably the meetings uh, and just minimising the risk. So just wearing masks around training uh, when you're getting treatment or physio, just wearing masks um, and having you know having lunch outside, stuff like that, just to reduce the risk. Something mm. that we don't really we already know, but something we can't control. It's frustrating but um you know we've got to do what's best for everyone's health and um yeah i mean the best thing about our footy club at the moment is the depth and um you know how many players are stepping up i mean jack viney goes down last week and luke dunstan comes in and plays a terrific role for the team mm-hmm. um and same as jake lever joel smith come back, comes back in and um does a does an incredible job as well so um yeah i think it's you know just that old saying one man out um, next man step up or another door open, what do you call it? Another door closed. No, we got you. No, we know you. We're with you every step of the way. We're with you every step of the way. Express slightly differently, but, so, but uh, Chris, spot on. when you go in as well as Super Tracker is yes. in the moment, you can say it any way you like. Absolutely, you can. Uh, you've gone from being the hunted to the hunter now. You know, you know how it works in this cape. You're, you're the standard setter. They come at you pretty hard week in, week out now, Christian, and yet you find a way, this footy team. How confident are you that, that as a group, that you can meet the challenges that are coming your way on a weekly basis? Yeah, I think we're, we're, we're very confident. I think, um, I mean, who, as a footy club, I mean, not just ourselves, but any footy club, you're going with the preparation, the plan to succeed on game day. And um, last year was a was a great challenge for us. We started 9-0, and zero, but the first nine games, we weren't really convincing. You know, they were, we were winning games, but they weren't, um, you know, putting teams to the sword. And I think that finals experience last year, obviously being a young team, really helped us um, have a lot more confidence and belief in in the system, each other, and all, like, all we already did, but you know, gaining a lot more of that. And I think we came into this preseason just knowing what we have to do to win, and that's just everyone playing their role. It's a team sport, and I think the beauty about it, everyone's just accepted who they are in the team. And um, you know, I love playing with this group in terms of that aspect, but. Yeah, in terms of being the hunter, we spoke about that early in the preseason. We you know we're the team that everyone wants to beat this year. Um, as a footy club, I mean, Melbourne supporters haven't had that for a long time. So, 
for them and, and ourselves, we, we love it. I think we embrace it. We love being at the top of the pack and um, everyone hunting us because we, we need to face that as a challenge each week, And but, but we love it. We absolutely love it. And you're answering every question, everything that's thrown at you guys. It seems like it's uh, becoming away, very, yeah. very, I wouldn't say easy, but uh, regulation. Andy posed the question about that uh, about whether this could actually be some sort of dynasty. He didn't expect any sort of answer, and, and nor do I. But having said that, is it ever... Do you, within yourself or within your groups, that it's, do you ever look beyond and, and think of it as a slab of, say, two or three years, or is it always just the week-by-week week, uh, standard line type stuff? No, we, we understand probably the position we're in, and um, I'm probably a bit different than everyone else. I don't really play it straight back with these questions, but we look at other teams. So, for example, you'd love this, Gazy, but the Spurs dynasty and the yes. sustained success that they've had, I mean... You know, yes, they've won four or five chips, but for us, it's about that sustained success, and that's when you create a lot of respect or gain a lot of respect from um, opposition. And you know, you look at teams like Geelong. Yes, they haven't won a premiership since '11, but to be in the finals for the last nine years, it's just absolutely it's probably more of an achievement, if anything, than the premiership. And for us, we we want to build a culture that is is not just here for three or four years. It's want to be here for a long time. And um, you know, we have the leadership group. We have leaders who who drive standards each day to, to do that. We have a great coach in Goody who's young, but um, is so motivated and hungry to put Melbourne um, back on back on the map where it was in the, in the 60s and um, 50s. So for us, being a young group, seeing what we did last year and achieving it, um, and I think as well, like, realising how quick the turnaround was, I think for us, like, realising when everyone buys into team defence, when everyone buys into each other and um, showing everyone their strengths, um, how quickly a culture can change, and for us, um, you know, you've seen that probably the first six weeks of this of this year as well. It's just that everyone's just flying in and, and just having a lot of fun. That's awesome to watch, Christian. Mm. Um, so, so speaking for yourself, w- will you measure it not just in finals, consecutive final series, but w- will you actually measure this um, group that you're part of in premierships one? Oh, I think I mean premierships is probably a bonus, yes, but. For, for me, being a part of an organisation and the culture that creates a pathway for other players down the path when I'm finished and, you know, Clayton Oliver's finished and then guys who are, who are under me, who, you know, Luke Jackson and other guys, that, when they retire, that they're finished, um, you know, they, they create a culture that we have built um, over last year. So for me, um, yes, winning premierships would be lovely, Andy, but <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, being a part of an organisation and a culture that um, is about you know, valuing the person and valuing success is probably um, something that I'd really, really be proud of. Hey, Christian, when I watch you it's play... A great answer, great it answer. Is, well done. Yep. Uh, <laughs> when I watch you play, there is a high level of swag about uh, the way you go about it. Now, is <laughs> that is that something that... No, we know where that comes from. Well, uh, shut up, you idiot. N B A. We know where it comes no, from. No, but I just wanted to know. Where is, does it come from? Is that is that <laughs> National Basketball <laughs> Association? <laughs> no, it's not. That's not true. Well, that's what I really want to ask. Is is that something that you intentionally like to make sure that everyone's aware that you're consciously doing that, or is it something that just innately you don't even realise there's a fair bit of swag going on? Um, no, I've always been a confident person. I've always been a confident um, kid growing up, and you know, used to smack Melbourne Tigers every now and then, Gazy. So <laughs> that's where I gain a lot of confidence from that. <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh, used, to, used to do backdoors on the surface. That's the it. Shuffle, so, that's uh, it. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I've always been a um, probably a bit of massive extrovert, and expressing who I am. And uh, for me, I think you know, early on in my career, I'd probably. I struggle with that because going into an AFL environment where there's a lot of other good players and talent, I've probably struggled with being myself. But the last few years that I've sort of got to know me as a player, understand my game a lot more, um, be in a position I want to be, um, I've probably expressed myself a lot more. And I'm just, you know, confident in my ability, confident in my uh, preparation week to week and what I do to get myself up for games. And but I also think like I'm a byproduct of, of the culture. Like, you know, I wouldn't be the, the person and the player I was if it wasn't for my teammates allowing me to mm. go out there and have fun and just enjoy the game. And um, I think sometimes, you know, you realise well, it's just a game of footy and like the perspective actually na- enables you to play a lot better and have more fun and just enjoy taking risks and having that fear of failure because, um, 
end of the day, it's a game of football. You just kick a ball between two posts. And, um, you know, that's probably the biggest thing for me is just having a bit more perspective and realising that, um, you know, just do what you do when you're a kid and having fun and enjoying it. And um, that's probably what I've gone back to. It's another great answer. Mm. It's it, a great answer. Well, it, <laughs> well, it is, mate. Hey, it's, if, it's perfect. If you can give us a good answer to this one, the last two days, Andy and I have been going through the whole Ben Simmons uh, issues. Oh, and, and I, I, I can't I'm, give a good answer. On yes, this. you give can. It, you got thirty. You got thirty-five give seconds. Us your overview. Uh, my overview on this. Um, well, Ben is one of my good friends. And I'll back him whatever he feels comfortable within himself. I don't really like to value our relationship on Ben Simmons, the NBA player. Um, I value our relationship on Ben Simmons, the person. So for me, uh, whatever he feels... I actually haven't spoken to him in a while, to be honest, probably in a, in a month or so since the trade. So, um, I mean, it's a tough position. Brooklyn, oh, you'd understand, Gagey, but Boston are a bloody good team. Mm. So their defense is unbelievable. So... Yeah, I have no idea, to be honest. I know, um, you know, the stuff with the Philadelphia stuff was weighing on him, but um, for him to be in an environment now with Brooklyn, having KD and Kyrie and guys around him that, you know, I feel like he can thrive in, it, I think would be awesome for him. Well, mate, when you have spoken to him, we're going to get you back on the show and you can tell us how the conversation went. Until then, hey, good luck this yeah, weekend well, though, and keep going beautifully as uh, part of a footy team that's doing what they're doing. Thanks for joining us on the show. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. You're, You're a good, good man. man. Christian Petrarca.